AAW. This is professional wrestling redefined. Justin Campbell here, sitting down with Hall of Fame legend Jerry the King Lawler. Jerry, you've signed on to AAW's Path of Redemption event February 24th. Do you have any memories of Chicago wrestling in Chicago that you'd like to share with us? Oh my goodness. I mean, oh, for first, the wrestling in Chicago, yeah, gr many uh, great matches that, that I really enjoyed. But just the thing about Chicago in general are the fans. I mean, without a doubt, we wrestle with the WWE uh, and throughout my career, literally all over the world. But I don't think there are any more devoted, more rabid, more uh, faithful fans than the fans here in the Chicago area. I mean, when we go into that all-state arena with the WWE, it, it, without it, every time, sold out, uh, you know, packed to the rafters, and 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 the, just the just the best, uh, it's just the best atmosphere. The Chicago fans just make for a great event, no matter no matter who's on the show or no matter what it's about. Uh, one stands out in my mind though, in particular, when um, of course you know a little bit of a, a little bit of advantage in the fact that he was a hometown boy, but when CM Punk won the WWE title from John Cena in that Allstate Arena. It was literally, uh, not only was the noise deafening, the fans were just, I mean, they, the roof almost came off of the place. And if that didn't put, if that didn't put chill bumps on up and down your spine, nothing would. I mean, it was just a, a magical moment. I remember um, one of our WrestleManias, I think maybe 22, 23, one of the WrestleManias in Chicago. My buddy from down, he lives in Memphis now, Joe Theismann, the Hall of Fame uh, NFL quarterback, came with me to the event. I introduced him to Vince McMahon, and Vince McMahon, I'd never seen this before, Vince McMahon was like a, a fan himself. He was like a little kid meeting Santa Claus almost. It was, he was a, a big fan of Joe Theismann's. And, uh, it just um, everything about Chicago, when we come here, is just a great, uh, it's, it's a great feeling. So I'm really looking forward to being back here again and competing in the ring. Now you've done it all in professional wrestling. You've obviously I have? Wrestled, <laughs> you've won countless titles. Yeah. You've done commentary. You've owned a successful wrestling promotion. Mm -hmm. You've starred in movies, but yet you still find time to wrestle in the independent scene. Why is that so important to you? I don't know. I, you know, I, I do get asked that question a lot. I mean, I've, I've been doing this for over forty years, um, and so the funny thing is, most of the most of the fans today, especially young fans. Uh, the, the, where they see me the most is is sitting behind the announce table with Michael Cole doing commentary, or with good old Jr. doing commentary, and 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 that's probably what most people think of the King uh, as. Now a lot of people don't, a lot of the younger fans haven't even seen me wrestle in the past, you know. But I got in this business 40 years ago as a wrestler, and was and 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 it wasn't until. Um, it wasn't until Macho Man Randy Savage walked out of the WWE unexpected uh, one Monday and showed up down in Atlanta on the, on the WCW broadcast that Vince McMahon came to me and I was getting ready to have a match that night and Vince rushed up to me and he said, King, can you help me do the color commentary tonight? And this is when Randy Savage and Vince McMahon were the, were the, was the broadcast team. He came up and he said, if you can just help me this one night, I'll get somebody else to do it uh, next week. Well, I was like... 19 years later, and I'm, I'm still doing it, you know, so uh, that's fun, don't get me wrong, you know, it's a great gig, but I didn't get in this business to be a commentator, I got in this business to wrestle and to, to compete in the ring, and that's what I always loved from day one, and I still, you know, I still enjoy it just as much as I, as I ever did, and so I, I take every opportunity I can to stay, and a lot of people don't realize how often I wrestle, I wrestle it's almost every week, you know, at least once or twice, um, every week, I just you know just finished up right after the right after the new year. Did a complete week, uh, and I wrestled quite a bit still with the WWE. You know, I did Madison Square Garden, Pittsburgh, Washington D.C., Hartford, Connecticut, all those nights in a row. Right uh, uh, there with the WWE wrestling against Jack Swagger and and um, uh, Mike McGillicuddy and all of these different uh, different individuals. But the the independent circuit and the independent matches that I do are sometimes as much or more fun than than the WWE matches because to me it's like a throwback to when I started you know it's the intimate it's intimate settings you know the venues are much smaller the crowds are closer the fans are you know you get to meet them on a one-on-one -on -one basis handshakes and signing autographs have your picture made with them you know the WWE most of the shows are just so big it's a little bit impersonal you don't get the chance to just because of the size of the shows to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with the fans that but on the independent circuit you can still do that and that's just what uh, that's what I cut my teeth on that's what I still enjoy all right, we have a couple uh, fan questions. Fan questions? Yeah. I have fans? <laughs> wow. Well, we've had some uh, emails ahead of time with some questions. Um, 
Who are they from, pray tell? Well, this one's from Mike, oh. Berwyn, Illinois. Jerry, very much looking forward to seeing you in Chicago in February. Can you describe what it was like during the peak of the Memphis wrestling years and how that compares to the business today? Hmm. Good question, Mike. Um, it is, it's hard, actually it's hard to describe, hard to put into words what, um, what we had going down in my hometown of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, a lot of people all around the country don't really realize, they may have, they may have kind of heard about it at that time, uh, and now there's a new DVD out called Memphis Heat that just sort of uh, tells the entire story of what Memphis wrestling was like actually from the beginning up until the uh, mid-90s. And Memphis, Tennessee was just a special place. It's not only my hometown, but wrestling there, I mean, it literally thrived. It was, it was, um, it was so ingrained in, the, in the, the personality of that city. Memphis, for a long time, had no other pro sports teams. So the, the fans, they really rallied around our, our uh, wrestling shows there. And we had did a live event in the Mid-South Coliseum, which seat ten to 12,000 people. Every single Monday night, we'd come and do a live event. Every Saturday, we'd do a live 90-minute television show. And um, it was just a magical time. Everybody in that city. I mean, you know, the ratings on uh, Saturday morning at 11 o'clock, we were we were beating out all the the ratings. We were had more people watching us Saturday mornings at 11 o'clock than watched any of the prime time shows on the networks. Uh, blew a Oprah Winfrey away. Uh, it was just it was just an amazing time. Everybody in that city was into wrestling, and we started so many of the um, so many of the the young wrestlers that came through or either started right there in Memphis. Um, went on to be known, you know, worldwide. Hulk Hogan had some of his first matches. I mean, when Hulk Hogan showed up in Memphis, he was just, he was a wet behind the ears bass player from a band in Florida. And, um, you know, he, he, he showed up there, put him in the ring, and then he went from there up to the AWA and then to the WWE, and gosh, you know, the rest is history. So many guys uh, that, uh, uh, gosh, The Undertaker, uh, Rock and Roll Express, oh gosh, Coco Beware, Superstar Build on D. I mean, this the, the handsome Jimmy Van. The list of names go on and on of guys that uh, were major stars there in, in the Memphis territory, is what we called it on that circuit at that time. And uh, gosh, a, a ton of those guys, you know, went on to the WWE to become huge. Uh, you know, I had, I had. Uh, uh, the Rock, The Rock's dad. I, I, I had matches against The Rock's dad, Rocky Johnson, and when and Rock was, uh, this was not Arkansas, but that's when he was Little Rock. Uh, <laughs> he would come to the show sometimes with his dad, and he was just a just a teenager, you know. And then um, and then I got to have the first match with him in the in the WWE, and he started out before we went to the WWE. He came down, cut his teeth uh there in in memphis so and i actually had his last match with him in memphis before he started like the following week in the wwe and i we were we were both uh you know simultaneously wrestling both places i had his last match in memphis and then the first match with him when he came to the wwe but so much uh, great talent was there at that time that um oh gosh i don't even want to just think the midnight express and jimmy Cornette, jimmy hart mm -hmm. uh you know who went on to be the mouth of the south was was there with us and so, so much talent. It was just an amazing time. I mean, every every city that we went to every single week was packed. Uh, we, we did Memphis, Tennessee on Monday nights, Louisville, Kentucky on Tuesday nights, Evansville, Indiana on Wednesday, Lexington, Kentucky on Thursday night. We were down Tupelo, Mississippi on Fridays, Jonesboro, Arkansas, on, and Nashville on Saturday nights. And it was just a, it was a lot of hard work, but it was so much fun. So many great fans and just a magical time. And Memphis Heat is the DVD and you can go to memphis-heat.com and I think uh, check it out. I'm very much looking forward to seeing that DVD. It is, it's, it's great. I mean, you know, it it goes all the way back to the to the wrestling in the 50s and some of the Sputnik Monroes and Billy Wicks and guys that really uh, were in on the ground floor in wrestling there in Memphis. Great. Uh, we got one more question? Another one. Yes. Uh, Who's next this up? from? Aaron. Aaron. I don't know if this is a man... Aaron or a we know a, we know a beautiful young female Aaron, don't we? Yes, you and I both. Yes, we do. It uh, is from Aaron from we Chicago. Know. Oh no, he slash she writes. Uh, Jerry, <laughs> who will you be facing at AEW? Are you looking forward to facing any wrestler in particular? You know, that's one of the other good things about wrestling on the independent circuit. Uh, I get an opportunity to see basically the best of of what these um, these. Uh, independent companies 
uh, talent-wise, the best they have, you know, when I go in there. And the, and the, the other good thing about if these guys get to uh, a chance to have a match against me and pray tell or heaven forbid if they were to beat me, I mean, that's like instant recognition yeah. for them. Uh, you know, I mean, they might get a call the next morning from Vince McMahon saying, hey, I heard about the big match you had with the King and get a contract. Who knows? And, you know, that's what the guys in the independent circuit, you know, naturally they they would love to get called up to the to the WWE. And, and uh, so usually when I come to these um, events, I wrestle the best they have. And, and I always know that it's going to be tough because I know that these guys are out to prove a point. They're out to prove that they are WWE worthy and can beat a WWE superstar. And, and, and if, they, you know, if they are successful at that, even if they don't get called up to WWE, that's an impressive thing on their resume. You know? So it's always, uh, I, don't, I don't have anybody in particular there that I want to face, but I know it's going to be the best they got. Great. Jerry, it's been an extreme pleasure talking with you. The event is AAW's Path of Redemption. It's February 24th. Get your tickets now while you still can. Yes.